Everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. It's right there up on the wall. This chapter represents the complement to our coverage of individual taxes. Businesses can be organized in a number of different ways. Sole proprietor, corporation, partnership, LLC. We know the entity choice can make a difference to taxes, and we're going to continue to break down entities during the rest of the tax modules. But some tax concepts transcend entity type. To start with, let's talk about how the calculation of taxable income differs between individuals and businesses. To start, business income is really just gross income, less business expenses. There are many fewer restrictions on business deductions, but the complexity of business operations often is many times greater than that of individuals. Here's a table that compares taxable income for individuals and for businesses, especially corporations. You can see that there is no AGI for businesses. Before we move on, let's talk about how businesses often report income. We'll start with the sole proprietor. If an individual operates a business and has no separate entity, for example, like a corporation or partnership, then the income is reported through the Form 1040. It's as if the business and the individual are really one entity because, well, legally they are. You can see business income on line 12 with a cross-reference to Schedule C. Here is most of Schedule C from 2017. Not much is going to change about this form with the new tax law. You can see that the income is reported in Part 1, and all the expenses are reported in Part 2. If we skip back to the 1040, you will see that Line 17 picks up a variety of income types, including income from S-corporations, partnerships, and rental real estate. The 1040 cross-references to Schedule E. The first page of Schedule E is devoted to rental real estate. This is for direct ownership of rental property. If the real estate is owned by a flow-through entity, like a partnership or an LLC, the income is reported on page 2 of Schedule E. Like Schedule C, the expenses of the business are reported here also. That way, the net income of the business is reported ultimately on, Schedule 10 for, or on Form 1040. As I just mentioned, Flow-through entities uh, report their income through onto page two of Schedule E. We'll talk more about these types of entities, but the same net income is reported here that's going to flow through to the 1040. As a note, there's no form for reporting corporate income to a shareholder. Corporations are not flow-through entities. Recall they pay their own taxes and earnings are distributed to shareholders through dividends which are reported on Form 1040. A corporation can also pay a shareholder employee wages, which, like any other wages, are just reported on Form 1040. So if the two parts of business income are gross income and deductions, we better cover both. Let's start with gross income. Gross income is defined as income from whatever source. This is a very broad definition. And it's meant to be. Under tax rules, all income is taxable unless it is excluded or deferred. And it has to be under some special provision. Excluded means the income will never be taxed, while deferred, of course, means that the income will be taxed at some future event. As an example, state and local bond interest, that's excluded. Whereas income earned on a qualified retirement plan well, that's deferred until a distribution is made. The definition of gross income is a little quirky in that it includes a deduction for cost of goods sold. When it comes to deductions, the tax law is reasonably permissive with respect to the deduction of expenses, so long as they are business expenses. Personal expenses, of course, are not deductible. Income is measured as an activity, which means the cumulative amount needs to be captured over some period. For individuals, that is almost exclusively the calendar year. Non-individuals can elect a fiscal year, but there are some restrictions depending on the entity type. You cannot just change your tax year whenever you want. And for this course, you can ignore the short year annualization topic. 
Once a tax year is selected, the issue of recognition becomes important. Recall from our timing variable that a year can make a difference. Before going any further, let's confirm our understanding of a few terms. We'll start with Chu. Chu purchased stock for $100. At year end, that stock was worth $120. Then in March, after year end, she sold the stock for $140. At year end, the gain in the stock was unrealized. She hadn't sold it. In March, when the stock is sold, the gain becomes realized. And in this case, it is almost certainly recognized as well. Recognized means simply that the income or deduction is reported as part of taxable income. These are magic tax terms, so be sure and use them correctly. Tax law almost always requires realization before recognition, whereas accounting rules do not follow that same principle. Think mark-to-market -market accounting, for example. Since we've raised the specter of financial accounting, let's clear up some of the differences between financial accounting under GAAP and tax accounting. To start with, they have completely different goals. Investors and owners use financial statements and financial information to make business decisions. Taxes are used to generate revenue. Now, we know that's not entirely true based on some of our discussion in Module 1 on the behavioral effects of taxes. But in addition, sometimes the accounting for something is changed because it makes good tax policy. Well, at least in the government's eyes. For example, expenses that are contrary to public policy are not deductible. This has been defined somewhat narrowly, but includes expenses like fines, bribes, penalties, etc. The new tax law included an interesting twist. To the extent a business settles a harassment case, and that case is subject to a non-disclosure arrangement, the settlement is not deductible. There are some other limitations also. For example, meals and entertainment have traditionally been only 50% deductible. Now under the new tax law, entertainment expenses are not deductible at all. Think about that. Everybody love everybody! Come on!